Well, it's that time again, a word with Pastor Al. I'm, uh, I pray we have a lot of people get on tonight because we're probably talking about the most important thing that we need to really nail down in our lives. We talked about so far this week, taking risk, risk for the Lord. And, and then we talked about the safety we find with the Lord. Uh, yesterday, we found that. But uh, with this pandemic affecting the world like it is and everything that's going on and even before it, it, it hit, uh, not just America, but the whole world, we have to remember that, that um, this world was fractured. Uh, we had so much division and so many things that was dividing people, especially in our country. Uh, and we're supposed to be a Christian nation. I, you know, there are some that will argue one way or the other, but I still believe we have the heart of uh, for the most part, uh, our churches, we still have a love for people. Uh, but what we need is maybe what God's trying to do right now. We, we, we see him doing a lot of things, slowing us down in a way that we have to stop and listen for a minute or think or see. And people are asking the question, what is God doing? And I believe maybe he's trying to slow us down. Uh, and, and maybe, maybe I'm praying. And I hope that it does happen. And that is that we would slow down enough that we see that we need more compassion and love. And that word that we're going to talk, that's what we're going to talk about today is love. Um, in 1965, some of y'all are going to, you may not remember it, but uh, uh, Jackie DeShannon, she wrote a song. It was very popular. And uh, I think it even got some awards. But what the world needs now is love. And I believe that what she was singing is how the whole world uh, looks at love. There's things that we have a misunderstanding of love. And that song that Jackie wrote or sang, she co-wrote it, but the when she was singing it, she was talking about the world doesn't need another mountain. The world doesn't need another stream or a meadow. And she's talking about the, the very visible things that we think the world is all about. Uh, the context of what we can see, feel, and touch here. But if she would have just really understood what love was, uh, the Lord, she's talking to God in the song. And uh, I can just hear God saying, I sent my son. Uh, how much more could I have shown you my love? And uh, well, 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 7 tells us this. It says, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not ir uh, irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Man, that's what the world needs. We need love because that is what God has given us. Uh, love's, love is the foundation of God. Uh, uh, we, we, just, we have lost that presence of God in, in understanding the grace that he has shown us. Um, you know, but here, here's the thing. We sometimes, and I'm guilty of this as well, there are times that I, I have no problem saying that I love the Lord. I have no problems serving the Lord, and I have no problems giving to the Lord. And some of you that, that may listen to this tonight, you can say the same thing. Uh, but it's just, it's as equally important that we show that same love to our neighbors. And there's just people that will argue about that, but I believe it's just as important. And Jesus said in Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31, he said, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And we like to quote that, and with all your strength. The second is this, and he was talking to the Pharisees, and he was talking about, um, you know, they tried to corner him, and they quoted the Old, the Old Testament, the Hebrew law that says we're to love God with, with all of our being. And But Jesus said, the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. These, there is no other commandment greater than these. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. And I, I believe that if we could get to a place that we can share that love that we have for the Lord, 
or emulate, and we're going to talk about that a little bit, but emulate what it is that God has shown his love to us and share that with a lost and dying world. Uh, share it with our neighbors. Share it with uh, those that we uh, come in contact from time to time. And some of y'all probably shaking your head and you're thinking, you know, but you don't know my neighbor. They're crazy. And I tell you what, I, I where I grew up, there's a lot of crazy people, but we all love one another too. And I tell you what, it, it's hard if if you don't have the Lord, you have a hard time understanding love, just like Jackie did when she sang that song. What the world needs now is love, but God has shown his love. And if we would manifest that love in our lives, it'd be a whole lot better place to live. I, I believe that with all my heart. And I believe that's the reason why we're seeing some of the things happen that we are now. I believe God has slowed us down and we need to start sharing that love in a way that we share. Uh, John Torson, he talked today. He's uh, the director, um, President Groton. He's the big dog, okay, uh, over the Central Baptist Association. And uh, he made he, he did a, uh, a little video this morning, and I enjoyed it immensely. But he was talking about building bridges to reach our communities. And, and I believe that that's what love's all about. We need to get across these barriers, these walls, these these obstacles that we have to get to people who don't understand who the Lord is and what love truly is. That's the understanding of love that this world needs. That's the understanding of love that Christians need to possess and show more uh, to manifest Jesus. Um, you know, A.W. Tozer said this, what comes into your mind when you think about God is the most important thing about us. I, I'd venture to say that the most memorized verse in all of the world is John 3, 16. And I'm sure you can quote it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that who, only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, what a, a picture of love and, and all those things that Jesus was willing to well, it was God manifest in the flesh and became a man, became a, a human that would know no sin, that he might become the Lamb of God, the sacrificial lamb that atoned our sins, that was able to wash us clean, white as snow, to reconcile us with the Father. There's no greater love than that. Uh, Jesus said, no, no greater love is this, that, that if a man lay down his life for his brother. And I believe we need to understand that. And, and I, you know, I don't think God wants us to be martyrs. I mean, there have been through history, there have been martyrs, but we need to die to self. As, back to Galatians 2.20. If we die to self, we crucify ourselves and all of our sins to the cross in which Jesus died to wash our sins away. We receive the righteousness and we receive the Holy Spirit that we might manifest that God lives within us. And if that's the case, I'm going to be preaching about this Sunday. We're going to show love. We're going to have the ability to possess the fruit of the Spirit. And I believe that's so important that we should do that. John 13, verses 14 and 15, we read about the story just before Jesus went to the cross. They're in the upper room. And it said that, uh, uh, here's what the scripture says. It, it, if, if I then, your Lord, Jesus is talking to his apostles, uh, Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example. That's an important word. God, through Jesus, gave us an example that you should also do just as I have done to you. And what he was saying was you need to share and be that servant. Um, you know, when Jesus was going to the cross, it was a matter of service. It was a matter that he, he came here to, to fulfill the Father's uh, will, and, and he did that selfishly. Uh, he didn't, he said, let this cup, you know, if, it, if, it's, if it's possible, let it pass for me. But he said, not my will, but thine be done. He put himself to the side and did what God wanted him to do. And then the sacrifice itself. I believe we could sacrifice more in you know, we, we, we remember that story where Jesus washed their feet and everything. But the very next thing that you read there in John is that Jesus, is he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand a piece of bread or I'm going to give a sup to the one that's going to betray me. 
So what that tells me that God, Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him, but yet he still washed his feet. He sat there and he said, the one that's going to betray me, I'm going to honor him. And, and if you learn the, the Jewish tradition that when you offered that sup, that, that piece of bread, as he did to Judas, I believe, even though knowing that Satan had entered Judas, I believe that he wanted to give Judas every opportunity to understand what he was doing and how he loved him. Even though he was going to betray him, Jesus loved him. I believe that with all my heart. And I believe that's what Jesus wants us to do. Those that we know are going to do us wrong. Those that have often come up against us. We need to love them as Jesus loved Judas. And I believe we, 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 can, we can do that. Because if we're believers and we have Jesus, all these words we've talked about over this last month, there's been so many ways that we have built ourselves up knowing that because we're believers, these words have significant meaning in our lives. But this word love is most important. Be honest with yourself and answer these questions. Are, are you loving the way Jesus loved? That's, that's not, it doesn't put any prerequisites on there. Are you loving like Jesus loved? Are you loving your neighbor as you said? Are you reflecting an image of love in your everyday actions? Not just your church actions, and that's been kind of put to the test here because we've not been in church. Uh, the church is still walking the streets, though. Do you act like the church there? And I believe those things, as we walk through life and and that love, and you know, it hurts sometimes. And it's, it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's hard. It's hard sometimes when somebody has wronged you um, that you don't give them a chance. Um, I'm so grateful that we have a God and, and a Lord that it, He's the God of second chances. Praise the Lord. If He had only counted on me one time, um, I betrayed the Lord so many times it ain't even funny. But he keeps saying, I love you. Just share with others. Just be what I've asked you to do. Be an ambassador. And I believe that's what kind of love Jesus has for us. Back to our neighbors, though, as a, fr a phrase, and I, I didn't know he said this, but Theodore Roosevelt made this statement, and I looked it up, and I wanted to make sure I was quoting it right. But nobody cares about how much you know until they know how much you care. Christians like to tell everybody about what the Bible says. Christians like to say, the, thus saith the word of God, and this and that, and we use it as a beaten uh, club. But if you share the scripture and you share the love of the scripture, that's Jesus, then you can have an impact on that person. You can share the love and you can sacrifice and you can do the very things that God has called you to do. There's no greater example than what Jesus said and what he showed us and then ultimately how he died was rose. And, and you know what? That's, that's you know, I'm going to bring it out of my Sunday sermon as well. You know, when we have the Holy Spirit living within us, we're to manifest Christ. That is a gift that God give us. That is a love that he pours out to us. Uh, you know, it was one thing that Jesus died, but if we accept that free gift of salvation, if we understand that Jesus died on the cross to wash our sins away, now follow me, if we accept that is true and we accept his love offering, his love gift to ourselves, it's more than just Jesus dying on the cross. Because two things have happened since then. One, we're filled with the Holy Spirit. Pentecost has proven that in all through time since then. But the second thing is, is that we have God's love letter, his holy word. Uh, and between those two things, God's Holy Spirit living and manifesting God himself in us in our lives that we might manifest the love that Jesus showed on the cross and keep his commandments. He says, "You, they'll know you're my disciples if you... Love one another and keep my commandments. Jesus gave us every example that we need. He gave us the word. And I believe we could do better. Uh, I know I can. And I know I need to do better. 
Um, I'm, I'm a redhead. I, it doesn't look like it. Now, there's a lot of white in there now. And that is it, at least that, that hasn't let go in the back. But here's the thing. I use, I'm a redhead for the most part. And I, I've, I've always had a temper. And I had a real short fuse for a long time. And God has helped me somewhat with my temper. Uh, but here's the thing. It wasn't that he took my temper away. He just cut the, the he, he, he made my fuse a little bit longer. He, he made it to where that I think about things and I, I try to do what Christ would want me to do. But here's the thing. If we supplement or replace anger, the division that we talked about at the beginning of the video, there's so many things that we get hung up on our pet peeves um, that we forget about love. And if we were replace those bad things with the love, just as Jesus did, he tried to, he, he gave Judas that, that chance. We have to give those around us that have wronged us and done us wrong. And, you know, we don't even, I mean, how about people that we don't know? I, I've said it time, you know, in, in the past and, and in my sermons and things like that. When you pass somebody on the street, do you look at them as an individual? You may look at how they look. You may think about how they smell. You may think about what ethnic group they come from. I don't know what your, your, your ideas and visions are on that. But here's the thing that Jesus does. He looks that person as a never dying soul. And he expects us to share the love that he died on the cross to share the love with us. We're just fortunate enough we figured it out. We're just fortunate enough that the Lord touched us and drew us by the Holy Spirit, that we accept that free gift of salvation. But then he fills us with your Holy, his Holy Spirit. And he says, now you go tell others what I've done for you. That's how we're supposed to live our lives. Uh, the verse for the day is 1 John 4, 19, and this gives about the best uh, illustration of our love, and that is that we love because he first loved us. We understand love because we understand what Jesus done for us, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. He didn't want to see the world destroyed. He knew Satan had messed things up with sin, but he loved us enough that he sent his only begotten son to die that we would have that atonement and that propitiation, not just to forgive us of our sins, but to make us right in a right relationship with the Father. That's, that's love beyond, beyond any imagination that we have. We have no argument against that. And I believe we ought to think about those things. So I've been challenging us to change our attitude on, on different items. And tonight, uh, I've got three here. Strive to be visible, tangible, and reflective Images of God. That's all in one, okay? That's not all three of them there. Be visible. You got to look like Jesus. Tangible, that means the, the realistic things, the, uh, uh, the, the things that we possess and the things that we hold uh, important in our lives. But then the reflective, that we are looking toward the kingdom. Not ourselves, not our end product here on earth, but we love the Lord. We love what he's done for us, and we're trying to grow the kingdom for him. Secondly, allow God's presence to fill your heart and show itself through your actions. That means do something nice for somebody. Amen. Find somebody that, and i tell you what, I, you really want to make somebody hit just back up and say, what's going on? Do something for somebody that has wronged you. Be nice to somebody that has put you down. Be nice to somebody that has cussed your love, and that's the Lord. Maybe be nice. You know, there, there are people that I don't agree with their lifestyle. There are people that I don't agree with their political stance. But I tell you what, I need to be compassionate and loving to them so that it's not an, a fracture that doesn't allow the, the love of God to come through. And then lastly, be a living example for a living God. Um, God indwells with us. I mean, he come in us. He's, uh, scripture says, do you not know that your body is the temple of God? Uh, when we walk around, we need to walk like, it, it's my illustration of a glove. Our human bodies is a shell. It's a glove. 
And when we accept the Lord as our Savior, God puts his hand in us like a glove, and then he's able to work and do the things he needs to do. That is the illustration that we need to do, is let God move us, manipulate us, use us to manifest his love toward others. It's, it's a hard task sometimes. I'm not saying it's not. But I believe it's not just a suggestion. It's what he commanded us to do. Love one another. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for loving us the way you did and the way you do. You created us. You give us a special place to live. You wanted us to, to live here and, and, and to just be in unity. And Satan messed it up. And we fell to the, uh, the, the, the tricks of the devil. And we still do today. But I ask you, Lord, I pray that you would show yourself. Just as you showed yourself to Adam and Eve there in the garden, even after they had done wrong, you loved them enough that even though they had to pay for their doings, you loved them. You, you, you killed an animal and you clothed them. You shed the blood. And ultimately, 4,000 years later, you, you shed the blood of your only begotten son. Let us understand that love, that you would give your only begotten son in a way that we could live with you forever to reconcile that relationship that you wanted with your creation. Let us hold true to that love and allow us to manifest your son. Let us feel the Holy Spirit. Let us under conviction and under the direction of your word, let us move in a way that people see Jesus in our lives. Well, that would be the greatest answer to prayer right there if we could just all do that, especially in the time that we find ourselves in the world that we find ourselves. And we know that the only thing that is going to fix this is that the Lord, that you would send your son to take his bride. But Lord, there's a lot of people still here that need to hear the truth. Let us be part of that. Let us share the love that you've shown us. And we thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Tomorrow's word is going to be support. Amen. You don't want to miss that one. So y'all be good. Be safe. And uh, good to see all y'all that's popped on here. Uh, y'all just y'all just keep, keep thinking about love and how you can show it to those around you. Amen. Y'all take care.